My talk, Do Movies Matter Anymore? This subject came up for me because I met a guy at a place I hang out that I call Fried Chicken Robert. Fried Chicken Ro Robert owned two fried chicken franchises and was a pretty smug guy. I made a few pictures and he said, oh, you know, your business is really in trouble. I don't think there's going to be a movie business in five years. And I was like, whoa, really? Because I just started. So <laughs> I really hope there is. And I thought, really, what, what is the value of movies? Do ma movies matter anymore? We live in a world, obviously, where you can watch things, as someone said earlier, on your phone, your phablet, your tablet, your television, ever larger, 4K, a behemoth at Best Buy. This is me in a movie I made. You recognize me. I'm, play I'm playing a pretend scientist here. <laughs> Here's me playing a pretend uh, seer, uh, about to tell this girl's fortune. I don't know how to do that. And this is me getting rained on in my own dream. So that's always fun. <laughs> so I've made a few movies. Now, I thought about the fact, why do movies matter to me? And why should they matter to us in this modern era? And I thought of Netflix. We all watch Netflix. We all stream our data. This is the new evolving standard of home video delivery. We had a speaker earlier talk about how many different ways this is happening today. I decided to pull some data. June 2012 was a good month because I could compare some data. The average user in a billion hours delivered to all customers was watching 2,691 minutes of Netflix. Average cost of subscription back then, streaming eight bucks. It's now nine, back then eight. Cost per month, eight bucks. Cost per minute, rough, or, yeah, roughly three thousandths of a penny per minute of viewed Netflix. Movies, 120 minutes, 12 bucks, dime a minute. Here's where I'd have a slide that would show you what 3,000 times the difference would look if I could do it without logarithms or a split graph. I just thought I would just put that up there and say we all know what 3,000 times the difference is. So really, maybe movies aren't a very economic deal. <laughs> it's a lot more expensive, 3,000 times more expensive than Netflix. Why would you go to the movies? There's guys on their phone. There's somebody annoyingly talking at the screen. At your house, you can go stop the thing, go get a snack, go to the bathroom, talk to your loved one, curse at them. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Then I thought of this guy, Plato. Maverick, icon, genius. I hear he's doing TED next year. <laughs> this is a Roman reproduction of a Greek statue of the genius. He said, and he came up with this allegory we all know about, I love this little cartoon, the cave, the allegory of the cave. Remember this? There's a firelight and a shadow cast, and these chained prisoners watch the shadow, and the more they watch it, Plato said, the more they think it's real. And that's what reality is in deference to the full objectivity of the world as he saw it. That we could somehow unchain ourselves from this and wander outside the cave, we'd see what real life was really like. Instead, we made this. It looks almost exactly the same. <laughs> Except it's a real light, and we're not really chained there, although I know the exhibitors wish we were. But we get to watch a movie in the dark, like you're sitting here right now, which is really why movies matter. If you can watch a movie or a television show on a phablet, hey, that's super, super convenient. You can watch it on your iPad, on your chest as you're asleep. Right? As you fall asleep during some episode of The West Wing. I've done that. Yeah, I love The West Wing. <laughs> Last season's a little wonky, but it's good. Um, so, why would you want to go to the movie theater, pay 12 bucks, and see a movie? Well, you can't rewind it. You sit in the dark with a bunch of strangers just like this, and something sacred happens on that glowing 2,100 square foot aluminized nylon screen. We show you an image cast from the very back of the auditorium that you can't rewind, you can't change, you can only watch it hopefully in the quiet darkness, with a bunch of strangers with you. And that's when entertainment like that, when movies at their best become almost sacred to us. We get to gather in the darkness and see these visions appear. The first time an audience saw a train coming at them in a screen, you've seen this famous image, all the audience ducks out of the way, and we all go, God, look at how dumb they are, right? <laughs> but if you'd never seen that before, you'd be dumb not to duck. Because how do you know it's not a trick and a train's gonna come right in and run you over? This is who we're starting to become, is this gentleman, right? One screen, two screens, three screens, four. Can I text and Instagram, watch a little bit of this movie, quote unquote, multitask? But there is no multitasking. All you're doing is fragment tasking. You're fragmenting your own mind. And you're not doing any one of those things as fully as you think you are. 
When you go to the movie theater, aside from the occasional phone-holding jerk, you're in the darkness, and you're watching that movie play out all together, and you don't know what's coming, and you can't stop it, just like that train. This is what we don't want it to be, <laughs> which is an exaggerated image for effect, but we don't want everyone on their own screen because that hyper-fragmented, hyper-individualized experience isn't a communal experience. Right now, there's only one me right now. I'm sure in the future I'll be on some broadcast due to the video, but right now we're all just watching each speaker that came up here. And we get to have a sacred space in front of us, just like the original theater, and this person transmits a story, a narrative, sometimes a special effects, a whiz-bang thing like Avatar, but we do that together. This is a great new movie that of last year, one of my favorites, called Her. Her was a movie that did something I think movies alone can do right now, and that is that they can capture in this somewhat older art form, filmmaking, all the extraordinary changes we're going through as a society, where we can have relationships not just with people, but not really people at all. Maybe our own devices, and we can fall movingly, deeply in love with them, maybe. That's a story about the world that's coming, and maybe the world that's already here. Further, sometimes we adapt video games into movies, and this happens, like in this example. I've never found one I really loved, but they're done, and they're okay, right? But what about if we started making movies about video games and video game designers? This is Ken Levine, who made Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. This man's genuinely a genius and an icon and probably a maverick. He makes games that people play by the millions. This is a still from a video game called Titanfall. It's a huge hit on the Xbox One that just came out. This is a first-person shooter. Millions and millions of people are playing this game as we speak, including these soldiers who do first-person shooting for real. And then they play this game on their off-duty, sometimes even when they're injured. This kid, to me, is what I think we're making movies about in the future. We're making movies about our own consumption of video, video games, our devices, and our, the ecosystem that all these things live in together, and how they're changing our world. Movies right now, that darkness I spoke of, where we sit together and watch something carefully and sacredly. That window is here right now. It may not be here forever. Things may change. I don't know. Right now, movies still do hold our glowing allure, our hypnosis, and our wonder. If we can make movies for this triumphant guy, we can make movies about his experience, I think maybe we're closer to examining the world we live in today through the living medium that we still have 100 plus years on. I leave you with this, I guess, and what's important to me about this subject. I like going to the movies. I like being in them, and I like sitting in the darkness watching either movies I've made, and even more sometimes movies I've never even been in or seen or known with people I don't know who raptly watch it with me. And we laugh, we cry, we're moved, and we can't wait to tell other people about it. That's the reason I go to the movies, and I hope you keep going too. Thanks a lot.